friend of mine let me come and clip some of these stunning garden anemone from her yard this week. They're one of my absolute favorite fall blooms. So naturally I had to draw them and I thought I could take you along for a quick tutorial. To get started, you'll just need a few supplies. First, a sketching pencil. I like this Sakura mechanical one. You'll also want a fine liner. I'm using the Sakura of America Micron pen in size three. I'll also use a kneadable eraser and some good quality art paper. I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper here. I love how thick it is and it has a really nice natural feeling texture to it. To get started, I'm going to lightly sketch out a rough outline of the composition. I'm going to draw a couple simple circles for where the stamen of each flower will be encased in another light circle for where the anthers will extend to. Then, I'll come in and lightly draw the petals around each stamen. Notice I'm not adding much detail here, I'm just trying to look at the flowers and block out where the main elements will be. I like having a bit of contrast within my pieces, so I'm adding some hydrangea blooms. They're really simple to draw and will add a nice element next to the large anemone blooms. Once I'm happy with the overall composition that I've sketched out, I'm going to come in with my Sakura of America fine liner and start inking in the outline. For the anemone, I'm going to begin with the stamen or center of the bloom. All I'm doing for this is layering a bunch of really tiny little circles together to fill up the larger circle that I've sketched out. If you look closely at a real anemone stamen, you'll see all the little circles like this. Let me zoom in a bit here so you can have a closer look while I finish the second one. I sped this drawing up a bit so if you're wanting to draw along with me don't hesitate to pause the video while you follow along. Now that the centers are in place, I'm going to come in and start adding some petals. The main thing I want you to notice here is that no two petals are alike. They all have a similar elongated U shape, but I'm not worrying about keeping them identical. If you look at the real anemone, you'll see the same thing. I'm adding a few little dips along the edges with an extra line alongside it just to create the look of some folds or curled up edges in the petals. I'll continue working around the flower until all of the petals are filled in. And let's move on to the sideways bloom. The shape of this petal the shape of the petals are the same, but instead of drawing a full U shape for the bottom petals, I'm just drawing a small portion of it, almost like it's been cut in half, so it looks like it's being viewed from the side. I'll add a few small circles for the stamen as well here, and then move on to a few of the buds. Thank you. 
Once the buds are done, I'll start the hydrangea blooms by drawing a small circle in the center of each one. From there, I'll start adding sort of diamond-shaped petals around each circle. The hydrangea I'm drawing from have either three or four petals, which is why I've drawn a mix of each. I'm going to add a few extra blooms and then start drawing the stems and leaves. To draw these smaller leaves, I'm starting with the main vein and a jagged or toothed curved line on either side to create the leaf. Again, don't focus too much on your line work. Once all the details are added in, it will look really good. To draw the larger leaves, I'm going to do the same thing. Start with two parallel lines for the center vein of each leaf, followed by a curved, jagged line on either side to create a bit of a diamond-shaped leaf. I'm going to rotate my page around a bit so that my hand is working at a comfortable angle. I know it's not the best for following along with, but I want to keep things realistic here, and sometimes I need to move my paper. Next, I'm going to work on finishing up the centers of the flowers. Using the larger circle we sketched out earlier as a guide, add in tiny oval shapes for the seeds surrounding the stamen. Continue working around each until a full circle is filled in. Before I go any further, I'm going to erase my guidelines. This is because I want to limit the amount of pencil that I draw over with in ink. This will make my pens last longer. Now 
Now that the lines are erased, we're going to move on to adding details to the piece, starting with the center of each bloom. Just add some quick, short lines, attaching each of the seeds back to the stamen until the empty space is all filled in. Next, I'm going to start adding detail lines to the petals. I like to work in quick, light gestures for the detail lines, concentrating the majority of the line work to the center and edges of the petals to create the illusion of depth and shape within the piece. You'll notice most of the lines are toward the center, and the lines I've added up toward the outer edges are shorter. Now let's add a few detail lines toward the center of the angled anemone blooms as well as toward the bottom of each of the buds. Now I'm going to move on to adding a few detail lines to each hydrangea petal. Again, I'm concentrating all of the lines to the center or toward the bottom of each petal, just to add some depth and dimension to the blooms. The last thing I have to do here is finish up these big hydrangea leaves. I'm going to do a bit of an S-curved line to fill them in. A curved line like this helps to create the illusion that the leaf itself is a bit curved and again adds to the overall dimension of the piece. I'm going to have some of the lines broken so there's a bit of white space here and there just to make it look like there's a bit of light catching on those spots. For the smaller leaves, I'm going to come in with a row of parallel lines on either side of the vein. Nothing fancy here. I'll rotate my paper a bit while I work here again. 
on these last two hydrangea leaves. Again, I'm filling them in with a subtle S-curve line to help create dimension. I'll zoom in a bit on this final leaf so you can have a closer look at the S-curve line. It's very subtle, but it adds a lot to the leaf. Now that I'm done the leaves, this piece is finished. And there you have it. Garden Anemone and Hydrangea Blooms created with simple steps for big impact. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.